Cheers, everyone. It's Sleepy Reader, a.k.a. Damien. This time I'm going to share with you a bit of my art collection. I've been collecting original comic book art pages for seven years, I want to say. Maybe eight, probably seven. And it's a bit of a, I don't know, a fun little thing to do where I check on heritage uh, heritage auctions every week. I bought some art from other places too, but a lot from heritage. Anyway, over time I started to realize that I'm collecting a lot of Conan art. And so I've told a bunch of friends, I'm gonna do a video on um, the Conan art in my collection. And when I started going through my uh, portfolios, I found that I had even more comic, Conan comic book art than I thought, maybe a little over 20 pieces. Um, none of them like super big, uh, you know, key moments or the biggest artists like Barry Windsor Smith. Um, it has occurred to me maybe maybe I could have bought one Barry Windsor Smith instead of all these or something. But anyway, this is how I had fun and I accumulated them slowly without even realizing that how much I kept coming back to Conan. Although I knew that he had a big place in my collection. Plus, a, a number of these come from... Conan related comics, but don't have Conan on the page, which would be another reason why I picked them up so easily. Um, but let's start with, um, I have two more modern pieces from Conan's return to, uh, to Marvel Comics that recently ended. But uh, this one is from their version, their more recent version of Savage Sword of Conan, which was just another color comic. But this was a nice little quiet moment where Conan is eating with um, some street urchin uh, hanging out in the city somewhere. I can't even remember what's going on, although I know I did get this issue originally. Um, I'll have to look it back up, dig it out of my boxes. But um, this is from Savage Sword number 12. It's page five. The artist is Andrea DeVito and with the inker Scott Hanna. So um, yeah, it's just a fun, humorous moment. Conan definitely, some artists draw Conan like he really needs to uh, shampoo his hair, which I suppose makes sense, but um, anyway. And here is another modern one, this one by Mohammed Asar, Asar? I'm not sure how to say his name, Asar? Um, from Conan the Barbarian number five, which at the time was written by um, Jason Aaron. I was so-so on that series, but, but I really like this page. Um, and I really like it. I think I like it even more in black and white than the color version. Um, so Conan is alone on this ship wearing his sailor pants um, and hanging out. Uh, is he sharpening his sword there, waiting, waiting for his chance to get somewhere, <laughs> for something to happen? But uh, I like that page. So maybe, you know, because I'm not going for the biggest pages, I get a lot of quieter moments, perhaps. Um, here's just a conversation, but uh, I was thrilled to get this. It's from, it's by, oops, let's start with this one. It's from 1979, the Conan newspaper comic strip, written by Roy Thomas. This one uh, illustrated by Ernie Chan. And I think it's really nice looking, Ernie Chan. And uh, yeah, Conan's mostly having a conversation here. Uh, but uh, I really like the artwork there. And then I have another Conan comic strip from a year later, 1980, and one of my favorite, all-time favorite artists, Alfredo Alcala, was now the uh, penciler and inker on this strip. So um, again, a, another quiet moment, people having a conversation, but I still really like the quality of the art. And, you know, so I think... Uh, I'm not, uh, sometimes I am pursuing Conan artwork, but sometimes I'm just thinking about, you know, what, what are the ways to get some artwork by some of my favorite artists um, in an affordable manner. And there's a, because of how long Conan was at Marvel and how many pages they pumped out a month, there's a lot of Conan artwork out there. Um, so one thing I used to get very inexpensively but it seems like the collector's markets finally cottoned on to it, so they're not so cheap anymore. But were pages of preliminary art. And there's a lot of 
preliminary art out there by John Buscema. He carefully figured out every page on a piece of scrap paper before he did his finished pencils. And so I, I'm shocked actually at how much of this I got, I guess, because I would like, oh, $30 here, $50 there, and I would pick them up. Um, and now they're, they're more expensive. But so here's an example on, a, on just sort of a scrappy piece of paper. Um, but you can see Buscema working out um, what's going on. I don't know what this is from. I, a bunch of the pages, I, uh, preliminary art pages I bought, didn't actually say what issues they were from. Um, some did, but so I need to research. And maybe some of them might even be pages that never made it into actual comics. Um, so this just says four on it. And it, I think it, I don't know what it says here. Something with an L. Loser? <laughs> maybe it's the name of the character coming in. Um, but... So this may be page four of some Savage Sword of Conan story or the like. I don't know. This one, this sketch I do know is from the Marvel Super Special that featured Conan. Um, and I even remember th this image of Conan pushing some monster off with it, like what looks like a giant candelabra or something off a cliff. Uh, I remember that. Um, so this is from 1978. And... Uh, you, know, you can see him working things out. Horses maybe take a little extra work. I don't know. Um, there's some. There's so much energy in these preliminaries. That's what I, I really like. I'm really into. You know, even in my own drawing, I prefer to draw in a very sketchy fashion. So, I'm really into seeing these really good artists at their sketchiest. Um, this looks to me like it must be a page from Savage Sword of Conan. I this image here of Conan leading an army. I think it's Conan leading an army or someone leading an army. That looks really familiar to me. Um, apparently it was page 45. Uh, so, and this, you can see this is on a different kind of paper. This is on like tracing paper. Um, and each piece of these preliminary artworks, the piece of paper is a different size. Uh, this one's page 19 of something. You even can see the little uh, holes. It must have been tacked up on, an, on a drawing board several different times, or I don't know. And it, and it has a big fold in it, too, which you can really see on the other side. Um, like it was folded up with a bunch of other scrap paper. Uh, so there we go. I really like uh, this Conan here. Um, that's very cool. This one's all this one's all wild action and gesture and movement. And you can see here, part of his process, at least at times, was to draw really, really scribbly versions of the figures in light pencil, and then a slightly less scribbly version where he works out a little more of the anatomy um, in the darker pencil. And then presumably this kind of thing is is what uh, artists call uh, putting it on a light box where they can see through from one page to another and trace over their work. Um, so he would probably, you know, do a sketch like this where he works things out and then uh, transfer what he liked onto a more finished piece, a, fee, a piece of paper for more finished comic book art. Uh, at least, you know, that's my presumption. This is from page six of something. Uh, another battle scene. Now, it's possible this isn't a Conan story, actually. It looks like part of a Conan story, but that could be, um, that could be Red Sonya there, I suppose, or some other swordswoman. Um, again, you can see sort of the, there's the lighter pencil and then the darker pencil where he's working things out. And there's an X through this panel, so maybe he decided that he didn't want to use that panel there where it looks like a uh, dancing girl is being attacked by cobras while a fat slob of a sultan watches on. <laughs> uh, I'd spend my life just obeying my wife. Uh, I really like this page. Could this be with Belette? Be Belet? Belette? I don't know. I imagine that is Belette. It's page five of something. It also says 90... Dash seven. So I don't know what that means. If is it 
uh, July 1990, or is it issue number 90, page 7, but I don't know. Yeah, I really like this page. I love that center panel with Conan. I love the picture of Billette or whoever it is spitting. Um, lots of action. The, the movement of John Buscema's work is at the forefront in these sketches. Um, and then the more inker, the heavier hand of the inker over it, the less action remains, I suppose. Here's an interesting one. <clears throat> Apparently from Conan the Rogue, which I think was a graphic novel. But this is an unfinished page. I'm guessing a discarded page. Whether John Buscema decided to draw it over or whether they just decided they didn't you know, need it for the story, I don't know. But here you can... Okay, so it's half inked, and, and it was sketched out first in blue pencil, um, which, which the cameras they use for printing never show the blue, so you can put in as much blue pencil as you want. Um, so it looks like John Buscema was inking this himself, and that judging from the... You know, I just realized he's inked all the faces and most of the figures. Now, I've read about some people who will, the master artist will ink the faces and figures, and then other people will do the backgrounds and stuff. I wonder if that's what was going on here, or maybe Busema started with the faces and figures and was going to ink in the rest before he discarded this page. Uh, but it's page 13, so I should look. Somewhere I have Conan the Rogue. I should look it up and see what's actually on page 13. But it's interesting to me that since he was inking it himself, the sketches, the, the pencils may be rougher and more just like those pr preliminary art pages because he knew, he knew, you know, he was a very experienced artist, of course. He could uh, ink, it, ink it in without a whole lot of guidelines. Um, so, yeah, very cool. <clears throat> okay, away from John Buscema at the moment. Stuff from Savage Sword that is not by Buscema and also it does not have Conan in it. But uh, as I mentioned, Alfredo Alcala is one of my favorite artists. So if I could pick up a random page here or there by him without spending up too much money, I'd jump on it. And this one really captures what he often did in... Savage Sword of Conan, where he he gave a real sense of this being from a long time ago, that that sort of almost etched in rock kind of feeling to his um, artwork. And uh, so this is uh, Savage Sword of Conan, number 82, page 12, presumably a Conan story, but Conan is not on this page. And what I, to my chagrin, I'm not too happy about it, discovered is that Alcala, um, Alcala drew this on a piece of paper and then taped it over another piece of paper that already had the dialogue on it. So that's very strange. Um, so did they send him boards, you know, pages with just dialogue and then expect him to draw it after the fact? And this was his approach? Um, inter very interesting, I guess. <clears throat> and uh, this is from the same issue, the same way, page uh, 22. Not quite as exciting a page, a more romantic one. Um, this almost has a, uh, an Arabian Nights flavor to it, actually. And luckily this page is not peeled up, but I can see that it is indeed taped over and that all the dialogue has been cut out. Um, and this may have been done on a special kind of paper that where you can get this charcoal effect without actually using charcoal. Um, some kind of paper where you rub off stuff. I'm not sure. Uh, but this is kind of a strange one. It's from 1982. Uh, Alfred, Alfredo Alcala again. Or Acala Alcala. Okay, and back to John Buscema, inked, this is from Conan number 86, a page without Conan on it, inked by Ernie Chua, and this time the, uh, the lettering has been pasted on afterwards. 
So here we're in kind of, we're probably in uh, Stygia, the uh, Robert E. Howard's version of Egypt. And uh, not very nice inking over Busema by Ernie Chan. And this is from King Conan, the same team, Busema and Chan. Chan's inking style keeps changing subtly. Um, this must have been a few years later. This is from uh, King Conan number six, page 10, and it's from 1981. And uh, again, you know, not a high action scene. Conan's out in the desert chatting with people. Yeah, you tend to have a lot of conversations out in the desert. And King Conan turned into Conan the King. This is much later. Now the art is being done, uh, pencils and inks by Tony Dezuniga. Tony Dezunia? Not sure how to say his name. Um, doing much less detailed artwork than I'm used to from Tony Dezunia. So this is uh, Conan the King, number 47, page 27, as you can see. Uh, the date would have been 1988. And I don't know if Dezunia had become less detailed over time, or maybe he just realized, hey, I'm working on a color comic, so there's not much point in putting in huge amounts of blacks the way I would for a black and white comic. So, and uh, that was page 27. Now we've got page six of the same book. Is a little more exciting as Conan gathers his army. He's always, when he was a king, he's always having to gather his army to fight back against some traitors who, who are working with some evil wizard to overthrow Conan. Okay, this these page does have a Conan on it. It's from Savage Sword. It is also, though, kind of a mellow hanging out talking page. I've got a lot of those. From Savage Sword, number 84, but by another sort of uh, hidden favorite artist, uh, when at least when he's at his best work, is uh, Val Mayrick. And I know from an interview I heard him give that uh, he, he originally got into comics wanting to draw Conan. So I guess he finally did in the, um, in the 80s. This is from 1983, Conan 80, uh, Savage Sword 84, um, Val Mayrick doing all the art and using a nice use of those gray tones. Which I assume all these artists, when you see gray tones, had to put it in by hand with a brush, um, you know, watering down their ink till it's a nice gray. So that takes a lot of care and talent. And the, this next artist uses a lot of the grays too. Um, it's John Buscema inked by Rudy Nebres, another favorite inker of mine, also a good penciler too. Um, and in fact, in a recent video, I showed you a, um, a page I'd just gotten where Nibres was inking over Gil Kane. But here he is over John Buscema from Savage Sword 98. He's fighting, fighting some kind of lizard monster. There is, it almost looks like they, he over applied uh, the gray tones over Conan's face there. But perhaps that was intentional. The idea maybe, I don't know. Um, that something was jumping at Conan and the shadow was over him. So that's one of my one of my favorite pages. Here's a very cool page and I don't have written down right here. It's either Ernie Chan on his own or Ernie Chan inking over one of the later Conan artists. Maybe Gary Kaspwitz or however you say his name. Anyway, I think it's kind of a cool page. I particularly like that top panel with the woman and the skull floating in the air behind Conan. Um, this is from Savage Sword, number 109. It's interesting, someone wrote a price, $110 on it, on the back. I don't remember what I paid for it, but probably more than that. Um, but it probably was sold at a con once upon a time for that amount of money. Yeah. And then, um, Perhaps that was Gary Kaswitz doing the pencils. Here's, and I don't really know how to pronounce his name. Kwapiz? Kwapiz? Gary Kwapiz? Uh, 
This is uh, from Conan the Savage, which was another black and white Conan magazine that lasted for a little while. Um, Gary Cap was doing a double page spread, doing the inks and the gray tones and everything himself, and probably having more time to spend on it, because this is just a beautiful double page spread, in my opinion. Conan and friends seem to be in the uh, Arctic wastes and have discovered some alien temple or some Cthulhu-like uh, place <laughs> hidden away. I own this issue. I own all the issues of Conan the Savage, but I haven't read them all yet, and I have not read this particular story, and I really should because um, it's one of my favorite art pieces. Here's another favorite. This one's from Savage Sword of Conan 209. I guess John Buscema returned to the magazine, as did um, Roy Thomas near its end. And this is inked by E.R. Cruz, who does a beautiful, beautiful inking job. Again, it's mostly a conversation, although Conan does threaten someone with a sword. Um, but I just love uh, Cruz's inking style here. And, um, and it's, of course, always... Uh, Good artwork, good at underneath the ink, good a good base from John Buscema. Okay, just two more to go. So on to the penultimate. Again with uh, Rudy Nebrez and John Buscema. This one from Savage Sword of Conan number uh, 96. In my collection, it's one of my favorites. Uh, just very exciting and really nice uh, grays and ink and blacks from Rudy Nebrez. And uh, an exciting uh, fight between Conan and this winged ape creature. And excellent shots of Conan running. <laughs> and wonderful stony pillars. Um, yeah, so I really get a lot of pleasure out of that one. And finally, oh, the, the, whoops, I bumped the microphone. The, my, the last one, I can't say which of these are my favorite, but I just really love this one, even though it's kind of odd, the pose. Um, it's from Conan Saga number 90. It's just a pinup picture by another person later in the Conan, a Marvel Conan run who was at times a kind of exceptional artist and at other times kind of rushed, uh, named Raphael Kayanin, I believe. And so this pinup's very beautiful with uh, his great architectural details and the sort of kinetic action caught in mid -act kinetic action with the helmet flying off. And, but it does seem like Conan and his enemies are just in a giant uh, cuddle. But uh, I guess Conan is uh, unarmed, so uh, he's lunged at the guy and they're plunging off, off some precipice together. Um, so very cool, just very graphically exciting. So that's my, uh, that's my Conan collection, um, Conan, uh, original art collection. I enjoy having all these different, uh, approaches to similar material. So thanks for joining me. And, uh, it's unusual for me to show off my art. I'm a little uncomfortable doing it, but I may do something like this again, uh, with, find some other theme running through my, my little art collection. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.